Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So let's continue here and create some actual content here. So I want to explain the process of loading content here. What we have now is in the admin section, uh, when we go to the edit part here, uh, you see that whatever we echo here is received on the other side as the output. So if, for example, I were to echo an input here, like this, uh, it's going to show up here, and there we go. Okay. So looking at the content, let's start with the course landing page here. So let's see the content that course landing page has. So course landing page on Udemy has the course title, course subtitle, uh, course description, basic info, blah, blah, blah. So let's see if we can design this. Now, instead of me, this is for course landing page, right? So we're going to put the content here. Now, instead of me typing the content here, because in here I may have to use um, because I can't just put HTML like this. I'll have to do echo and then put the whole thing in echo mode like this. But I don't like this. I want to type in actual HTML. So what I'll do instead is I'll include a file here. I'll just say um, require a file. I just say require. Or let's use include so it doesn't show an error. Nah, it still does though. So I want to include a file. This file is going to be in the views. So we're going to go to app views. And then in the view uh, part there, I'm just going to create a folder called tabs. In fact, I'll call it course um, edit tabs just so things are clear what's happening and then course edit tabs and then here we're going to have course landing page dot since it's a view file i'll put the view.php so if we include this file uh it's as good as echoing the content there so now all i need to do is go to my views folder right click Create a new folder in there. I'll call this one course edit tabs, just that there and save. And then in there, I'll create this page, this file right there. So new file in there, save, save it as that, save. So I'll say um, this is from course landing page view.php so that we can see that content. So let's come back here and just go through these guys and see what will happen. And as you can see, it shows up. This is from course, whatever here. So whatever I add in here, let's say I put an input like this of type text, give it a name. Um, I can add classes here, bootstrap classes. So this one is form control like that. Okay, form control. Let's put a break tag. Let's do that. And then if I move back and forth, you will see these are the items. Let's add some placeholders in here. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So at least you can see that when we go here, we have nothing. When we come here, we have this. Okay, so this is all good. The only problem is we can't run PHP. So let me try and show you this. Uh, if I, for example, tried to put some PHP tags here and say, um, I'm going to say um, var is equal to hello, like this, okay? And then I try to echo var maybe as part of the placeholder or let's put a value instead 
So I'm going to try to echo that value as var like this. Uh, or here I can say echo var like that, just so we can see what will happen when I reload this. Uh, oh wait, it actually works. Uh, this is cool. Oh yeah, because I'm including uh, the content, so it should actually work. True, 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 it should work. Yeah, now uh, the issue is, oh wait, actually this works rather well. Yeah, because I'm including it in here, so it's part of this. Okay, so what we're going to do, since it, it has worked, I was expecting it wouldn't work, but it seems it's working fine. Now, what I don't like is the fact that I have to type all this just to um, get that page there. So instead, what I'll do is, I'm going to go to functions and create a function to do this for me. So I'm just going to copy this. And here I'm going to say, let me go to, um, all right, a minute functions. That's where I'm looking. Down at functions here, I'm just going to create a function and say function uh, views path. Hopefully I haven't created this function already because sometimes I forget these things. Okay, there's only one match, so it shouldn't be. And here I just want this to return a path. So in here I will put a path or file path or something. So I'll paste this. All I want is to return a views path. Okay, so... This is dash dot dot up views and then right about here we have the views path. But if another item was added to this, what I'll do is um, I'll add it here and remove, just leave the view.php there. So I'm going to put uh, brackets dot dot and then put the path in between like so. All right, so this is supposed to return the views path with an item there that belongs. So this is a way we can grab things from the views folder. And then we just put the middle part here and then it can connect the rest of this. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. Let's come back to our admin course. So let's duplicate this so you can see the difference. So here I'm just going to say views path like so okay and then for the path i'll get this middle part because i know the views path ends at views and then it assumes there's a file you want to get which has this part so i'm just going to grab this part right here and put it here paste okay so that's about it all right uh -huh. so let's see if we get uh similar results Okay, so the results are exactly the same, but this is much cleaner. I don't have to worry about the specific path. This is just relative. Okay. This folder is quite long, but it's okay. I think it describes what it's doing, so that's better. All right, so this is good. Now, all I need for this is to match what I want here. Hmm... Let me see if I click here. Does it still save which tab I was on? No, it doesn't seem to do that. So let's fix that real quick. Courses view, uh, the tab, uh, set tab, show tab. Mm -hmm. So I want at the end to show the tab that tab is set to. So copy that. Let's come down here. Didn't we already add this? No, it seems we did not for some reason. Show tab, set tab. Okay, so right at the end, I'll just put show tab. And then it will show the currently saved tab. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that works. So if I'm on promotions and I refresh the page, it stays on promotions. If I'm here, 
if I'm landing page and refresh the page, it will stay there, which is nice. Okay, pretty good. So all that is set very well. All we need now is to actually display some actual content. So what I would do is I'll put the inputs in a div like so. And I'll put that in a form. So let's move like this, like that, like that. Okay, cool. Let's put a method. We don't really need to do this actually. Uh, we'll just leave it be for now because we're going to be submitting using Ajax anyway. So we won't need a method there. But the div here can have some classes there. I want the uh, column MD. Uh, let's try six. And then let's put MX auto so it's in the center like that. Let's try this and refresh. Okay. So something in the middle like that. I don't want it to go all the way. So maybe it was a good idea to put things like this after all. Anyway, so we have course title, course subtitle. Uh, let me copy these guys. Course description. And then we have a section for basic info, which has all this here. Okay, so no problem. Let's copy these things one by one. Uh, what I want is if I go to, if let's go back to templates and nice admin, it's a good idea to have the thing open in on the side so that we can grab items as we wish. That way we don't have to type everything from scratch. So if I go to forms and form, let's try with form elements first. Okay, so here we have, I'm looking for something that at least has um, this kind of thing at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, maybe this input here. So let me grab this one. Uh, input groups. Hmm. What's going on with these guys? Okay, let me inspect the element. Maybe let's go to form layouts. We can find something we need here. Hmm. I want one without, um, because this is editing, so it's a good idea to have the title on the side the way this one is, or this one right here. So let me just inspect this one and grab it. So it's an input group from there. Yeah, let me grab this, copy out HTML, and let me add it. So I remove these two inputs, just add this one. Okay, like that. And this one is course title. Okay, so let's come back and let's see that in action. So refresh, we have course title there, which is uh, nice. Let me increase this to eight. And the reason I've put MD there is so that when it gets to the middle, it can go full screen. So here, let's try a responsive design to see that. So at some point it um, goes full screen. Oh, wait a second. What's happening with these guys? So the problem is our tabs are not very responsive. I forgot about that part. See, this is a beauty of um, of Bootstrap. Everything is al already responsive. So let's make them responsive. It's not a big deal. Uh, we can just say, if we go to the um, tabs holder, let's just tell it to wrap around. So let's say flex wrap. Let's set that to wrap around. So it can wrap around at a certain point. Let's see if that solves the problem. And it kind of does. So things are wrapping around, but these guys are going uh, two words down. So what I can do is my tab, 
I can give it a minimum width, which is also the same as flex. Uh, what's it? There's a thing flex. I don't remember what it is now. Uh, the property, but let's just use minimum width. Let's say 150 pixels as a minimum width there. So that way, at least we have tabs like this, this one. Let's put some more padding. I've seen some padding bottom here. Let's put more on the top as well, like this padding top. That way it's not so close. Okay, much better. So at least we have intended learners curriculum. It's down here. And if I'm zooming out like this, uh, it automatically uh, responses itself like that. Okay, so that makes it very responsive. All right, so let's close that.